Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Do you have his Guacamele Gold Edition? Well, this is a Metroidvania game starring a luchador, entirely standard. It's by a company called Drinkbox. They were responsible for a game called Tales from Space Mutant Blobs Attack, which was fairly well received and was one of the first games that was actually worth playing on the PlayStation Vita. Guacamele also happened to have that particular honor. It was released on PlayStation 3 as well as PlayStation Vita. And the Vita version was really, really good, aside from the fact, of course, that it was a small screen, so things get a little bit difficult to see from time to time, but the port was fantastic. And now they have a port on the PC. Gold Edition includes the uh, extra level pack for this, which promises to be infuriating, as well as the costumes that were associated with it, and of course is PC-specific. So let's have a look at the options menu. As you can see, we actually have a working mouse for the options menu, which is always nice. Always nice. Not really sure what happened to my resolution options here. For some reason, they've changed back to 59 hertz. They were at 120 when I last looked at them, which is a little strange. I'm not going to mess with it now, though, because it might mess with the recording. Options-wise, it is uh, fairly standard. It is a 2D game, which means that you should not be expecting too many options, but you do get full resolution through to 120 hertz as well for those of you with 120 hertz monitors. And then you've also got full screen off and on, V-Sync, and AA. Keyboard remapping is available with several different sets of alternate presets, but you can also set individual keys. The question you might ask, and rightly so, is does it work with a keyboard? Yes, but not that well. The game definitely markets itself as a title which is recommended to be played with a controller, and there is a very good reason for that. I'm going to get into the game and I'll show you exactly why. Huh. Now, I thought I got through this bit, but I guess I didn't. All right. <laughs> I thought I'd actually beaten this temple, but it's actually got me right to the end, which is nice because that means I'll be able to show you a little bit of a boss rush through here. So welcome to Guacamelee. It is a Metroidvania game, except you are a luchador. Yeah. So this is your character right here. He's got various different luchador wrestling moves, as well as moves blatantly nicked from other games. And you do most of the platforming as well as the combat using those moves, which is a little interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. Along the way, you will find various areas like this, which will allow you to buy stuff. Yeah, there we go. And it looks like I managed to get myself a stamina upgrade, I believe, there. You can buy various different moves as well as boosts by using money that you found in the game. You get more money depending on how well you actually do the fights and things like that. So what the hell just happened there? Well, I went through a portal, and this game has a world of the living and a world of the dead, and you transition between them via these portals. It reminds me just a little bit of Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver, and a lot of what happens in the game is based entirely around those portals. Most of the jumping puzzles, the platforming, the transitioning between the two is kind of a necessary thing. Alright, so I'm going to have to get my way out of this situation. This is not too difficult. You don't get to fight this boss. You have to basically outrun him and do a couple of a little jumping puzzles here and there. And a little bit of combat along the way, which is fine. There you go. You can have some of that. I'm going to avoid a lot of that, because otherwise I'm going to end up getting messed up here. There we go. Nicely done. Now, in the sense of it being Metroidvania, it has the characteristics of games like Castlevania and Metroid. And as you can see, it also has some references to somewhat older titles, like Super Mario. Down you go. The actual game itself is... Linear in the sense that you have to make your way to the end, but it's got some Zelda-esque stuff in it. It has a decent amount of backtracking, and it has very much the characteristic that all Metroidvania games are defined by, which is the idea that there will be stuff in your way that you do not have the ability to bypass because at some point in the game you will get the ability, then you have to backtrack to that area in order to do it. Uh, that's actually a really, really standard feature of Metroidvania games. And this game is no exception, except this time around, instead of items, it actually gives you wrestling moves, and these different wrestling moves will allow you to bypass those obstacles. And this is a little unusual, actually. You'll notice, like, a headbutt here will let me knock my way through these kind of greenish-yellow blocks. And they'll be shown on the map as well, and there'll be various different things on the map that will indicate various different obstacles. Some of them you won't be able to get past yet, some of them you will. For the most part, certainly through the first dungeon, they were 
fairly lax about that. As soon as you learned the headbutt, you could then go and bypass a bunch of stuff, and once you saw those blocks, you figured out, all right, well, I'm probably going to need something in order to beat this. So there you go. And then you were given the headbutt move and you were able to do it. The unusual thing, of course, is that combining the fighting moves with the platforming is something that you don't generally see in a lot of games like this. The Dragon Punch, for instance, like that, actually will extend your jump and is required in order to do a lot of the jumping puzzles in this particular game. That is unusual. Generally speaking, that does not happen. And the integration of the two is surprisingly satisfying. All right. Well, it's telling me to go in that direction, but I really want to go in this direction. That's actually going to take me to the Temple of Rain. It may be, actually, that there's something that I'm missing here. No, it doesn't look like it. I was thinking, hi, huh, is there a yellow block there I can bust for some kind of bonus? But apparently not, so never mind. We shall head back in the direction of the town, since that's where it wants me to go. Hopefully I'll get to show you some of the jumping puzzles, because some of them are rather interesting. Now, take a look in the background, by the way, as we go through this. I think it's fairly important that you do keep an eye on that. Looks like I can't make my way up here just yet. Because I think you'll see some rather unusual stuff. And there you go. <laughs> There's a prime example. Lost Caster Crashers. The game is chock full of these references. For the most part, they're in the background. It's very similar to Tales from Space in the sense that they take a bunch of pop culture, internet, and meme stuff. And then they sort of throw it in the background. And uh, that's actually surprisingly okay. I think a lot of the time I would have just found this kind of thing cringeworthy. But as it stands... The fact that they just kind of put it in the background, don't force it on you through the through characters and things like that is really quite good. You, know, you just see these neat little posters in the background every once in a while, and that's actually fine. Now, these hub towns will, from time to time, have some interesting stuff in them. This is another example of that whole Metroidvania thing, whereby that's a red block. I have no means to bust that, which means there must be an ability like some kind of ground pound that I will get later, and that will allow me to sort that out. The actual town itself is nicely designed and there are some very interesting characters as you can see the the overall art style of this game is actually fantastic really nice definition to it very very colorful indeed kind of hoping that i get to fight this guy that would be nice we will see he's probably going to run off which would be very very disappointing considering the last boss fight wasn't even really a boss fight oh they threw troll -a -lol in there why would they do that oh my well, you didn't think that one through. It's alright, they'll reuse those animations later, no doubt. Off you go. Thank you for this money. I'm not sure why you gave it to me, but hey, whatever. Alright, so Flameface is a character I need to pursue by the looks of it. Ooh, I could smash my way through this here. Oh, here we go. This goat is going to teach me a move. I can pretty much guarantee it. Don't ask. Do not ask. There we go. Well, that's an ability to make my way through there. So, as I was mentioning earlier, these abilities that you acquire will allow you to bypass various obstacles. Like that, for instance. So, that will let me smash the green stuff. Something barrel collection. Okay, I will I will break the barrel collection and probably upset him greatly. Or should I leave the barrel collection alone? I really want to break the barrel collection. I really want to, but he's kind of adorable and I would feel kind of bad, I think, so... Maybe I sh just shouldn't. I haven't really had a chance to show you much outside of this yet. I would ho I'm hopefully going to be able to show you the combat quite soon. And then I'll show you what makes it unusual. I mentioned the combination of the... The use of the wrestling moves with the combat. And the use of the wrestling moves with the platforming. And that will become abundantly clear. Soon enough. Do not worry. I don't want to smash his... I should go smash his barrel collection, shouldn't I? <laughs> no. No. I, I, every game where I see a bunch of barrels, every game, I just want to wreck all of them. I suppose that makes me a horrible person, but hey, there you go. Well, I guess we're going in this direction then. And even on some of this, you actually have to use your abilities to extend your jump, which is strange to say the least. All right, next area is the desert, so... Hopefully get to show you some stuff there. I'll actually show you the meat of the game. Now, I mentioned that the controls on the keyboard didn't work that well. Let me show you why. So, you may have noticed earlier that I was able to throw an enemy just like that, right? That's a very, very useful thing to be able to do. 
You also have various other moves like pile drivers and suplexes, which are good for doing like more direct damage to a single target if you don't want to toss the enemy around. I can't even reach this guy. There we go. I'll dragon punch him out of the air, then grab him and slam him into the ground. Now, you may also notice the... What should be fairly obvious to you at any rate. All right, I'm not going to be... Kill, I don't think I'm, I can actually kill these. I'm just going to ignore them. The useful thing that you can do is you can throw an enemy in the direction of more enemies. And that is a very useful way of clearing out large groups of enemies. Very handy indeed, and I would strongly recommend it as a course of action. Ah, it looks like I have to toss these grenades back at them, I suppose. There we go. And also, of course, tossing grenades, which is a new feature which I haven't actually seen done yet, but there you go. Now, the thing about that is that the analog stick controls the direction which you throw. What does that mean, kids? Yes, indeed, that means that the four-way movement of the keyboard is not optimal for that. This area kicked my ass, good lord. They're not messing around, are they? Absolutely not. If you can't precisely toss the enemy in a particular direction, then you are going to run into a lot of problems. Because in the harder fights, the this precision tossing is kind of required in order not to suck. There we go, throw him at that. Now imagine what would have happened if I tried to make that throw with the keyboard. Yeah, you can't. Now I have a feeling what they could have done is make some of the combat use the mouse. And that would have allowed you to do the aiming in a similar way to how a lot of twin sticks do it. But they chose not to do that. And I have a feeling that that's caused them a bunch of problems. As a result, the game is going to be very, very difficult if you decide to use a keyboard. This means that if you do not have a controller, I would have to kind of automatically recommend not picking the game up. Because it's just not going to play all that well for you. Which... It kind of sucks because the game's good. It's actually very good at what it does. But if it doesn't control properly on PC without another peripheral, a peripheral that you might not necessarily own, then I think... <laughs> yes, because you can. There we go. Then, yeah, it's, it's not an ideal situation, is it? Absolutely not. And that's an entirely legitimate reason not to purchase a game on PC, by the way. I've said it many times before, I think it's probably in your best interest to have a 360 controller. You can protest about it all you damn well please, but the reality of the situation is some games either just don't work well without one or are not properly ported, so don't end up using keyboard and mouse well. Which sucks, but that is still a reality, and if you want to play these games, then you do have to deal with that. Unfortunate. i will buy myself a health chunk here, I think. I can maybe buy another one. I love how colorful that is. Man, it's the, the entire art style of the game is so incredibly impressive. And I'll buy another one, I think. There we go. Up my health bar a little bit. Things are getting a little bit more difficult. I mean, even just little scenes like that, and whenever you learn a move, you, you get this awesome little colorful animation. And it's so rare to see something just... Go ah, you can... Ah, I see. You can use the slam to do that. All right, that's good. Now I know how to deal with it. And then that means we're going to smack him into the ground, I think. That should work fairly well. The combat is so much fun as well. Like, it's just the ability... It's the throwing that does it, yeah? A regular kind of brawler combat is good. It's, you toss in the, the luchador wrestling style into it and put the throwing in, and suddenly it becomes really good and incredibly fun to do. Just being able to... Pile drive skeletons into the ground, ground pound, suplex, throw enemies into other enemies, which toss them up into the air, and then you can combo them midair for more enemies. It's great. Like, that's incredibly fun. Really, really awesome. I appreciate that greatly. They've done a stellar job with the combat. The dodging is also really, really responsive. I mean, movement in general is just really, really responsive. It's tight. It feels good. It's satisfying to use. And surprisingly enough, with the jumping puzzles, I generally don't feel frustrated, which <laughs> that was awesome, which is surprising because I usually hate jumping puzzles and with good reason because they're awful. But in this case, I think it's the combination of the idea that the moves that you use in combat are the same moves that you use in the jumping puzzles. So you, you kind of get a chance to get used to them, which helps, and you can more easily see the practical application of such things. So it's less contrived and ridiculous. 
And also that if you throw in the portal system, you suddenly have some really interesting puzzles that are actually satisfying to figure out. Usually in games like this, I'd hate that. But in this case, actually, the, the games really got me into it. And usually I don't, I, I'll be entirely frank, I don't like Metroidvania games most of the time. I, I don't find them all that enjoyable. I think the, you know, the backtracking kind of sucks. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. Hmm, that's a red block. So I should be dragon punching that in theory. There you go. You know, just something small like that. That's pretty cool. That's neat. We're going to get a few more puzzles like that as we go through. Hopefully, it'll give me some more portals as well so I can show you more of the land, land of the living, land of the dead kind of thing that's going, got going on. I think what surprises me about this game is the fact that Drinkbox are a fairly new studio, and yet they've managed to create something that is... It's... Mechanically, it's really mature. Like, I won't call it a mature storyline or anything like that. That's nonsense. But it's a mechanically mature game. What do I mean by that? Am I just talking out my ass? Not really. Only a bit. What I mean is they've realized a game where every single mechanic does something awesome and interacts nicely with the other ones. And they've done so in such a way that it actually feels satisfying to play. And that takes, it takes a certain degree of effort. Anyone can make a brawler. Anyone can make a Metroidvania game. Can they make them good? That's a different matter entirely. Can they make it so that the combat is integrated with the platforming? Usually, no, they can't do that. They use, yeah, these, these things are usually completely separate. And if you look at a game like, say, Devil May Cry, for instance, not the newer ones, some of the older ones, the platforming in that game just like, it feels like it's not even supposed to be there, right? And it's clumsy as a direct result. And the fighting engine is clearly better. Here, I wouldn't say that the platforming or the combat are better. I think they both synergize incredibly well. And I think they're both implemented really, really well. Pacing's good as well. The combat starts off nice and simple. And it's the, it kind of still is when you think about it. Because really, you're, you're doing these kind of same three-punch combos. But it's the throwing that makes it interesting. And then, add into that the fact that all of your mechanics suit your theme properly. Yeah? You fight like a luchador wrestler. You focus more on wrestling moves than flashy combat and fly kicks and nonsense like that. That's great. Yeah? There's just enough flash to keep with the theme, and it's still grounded in the idea that your character is a wrestler and not a goddamn superhero, even though he's technically both. That actually is... That's really impressive. Really, it is. Oh, hello. What do we have here? Something to punch in the face is the answer to that. There we go. Do I have any complaints about it? Mm. The, well, aside from the PC port control issues, the PC port's pretty good, but what I can tell you is that I have encountered a number of bugs in the first temple, and these resulted in the game freezing up. Basically, I failed the jumping puzzle a couple of times, and it port it automatically pulls you back. You, you don't really die you don't die from failing jumping puzzles in this game, right? They, the game doesn't really want that to happen, so it doesn't let let it happen. It, it just portals you right back up again. This is a, a nice tricky one. The shield mechanic's quite new. I haven't seen this yet. And that's fine, because some of the puzzles take quite some time to figure out, and eventually, once you do complete them, then you, you'll feel pretty satisfied. However... In a couple of instances, I've ported back up, having failed one, and then the, my character just got stuck. Like, it hasn't properly respawned. Shows them on the screen, but I lose control, I can't do anything, and I've had to restart the game, which has resulted in a significant loss of progress. Because, honestly, the game does not do a great job of checkpointing. For instance, when I started this game up, I expected to be in the town, because I'd already ported. So I assumed, oh, I've gone through a portal, that's probably a checkpoint. No, apparently it's not a checkpoint, actually. And I had to do the whole boss rush bit again. Which was a, a tad silly, to say the least. So that is something that I would consider to be a definite negative. Aside from that, though, it's very hard to fault the game's mechanics. It's very hard to fault the game's level design. It's reasonably maze-like without being horribly confusing, which is nice. The map is very, very clear. I think it helps that the art style is, is kind of stark. 
in the sense that it's just a lot of bright primary colors. Uh, they, they haven't gone overboard with the shading. In fact, there's barely any shading really in the game whatsoever. And it actually, it's not just the art style. It's even like looking at the map. It makes it much, much easier to find what I'm looking for. And that's great. Sometimes I do have problems finding... I am now a chicken. Well, that's problematic. Do I have wrestling moves as a chicken? Am I... Wow, I'm going to do the level as a chicken now. Okay, this, this has made things very, very interesting all of a sudden. I take it buying stuff from him isn't, probably, isn't really going to help. All right, we're doing some chicken platforming, which is not as interesting as the regular chicken stuff. Or as interesting as the regular game stuff. Ugh. I can't wall slide or anything as a chicken. Why is this? What a terrible idea. Can't do my dragon punch. There we go. <laughs> Why am I a chicken? Why? Some people might be put off by the game's sense of humor from time to time. And I think that's that's probably just because it, it's it got a, a few too many of the whole le 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 meme nonsense. It, it, they definitely could have done without that. But I also think that's just drink boxes style. Doesn't necessarily help them though. Ooh, ah, it's a secret. Okay. <laughs> that's kind of neat. It's a little pseudo stealth chicken section. So aside from those minor gripes, would I recommend it? Based on what I've played on both this and the PlayStation Vita, I would have to say heartily. Like this might be the first Metroidvania game that I actually played a completion because it does such a great job of pacing everything and it does such a great job of teaching you the various mechanics and not getting you horribly lost and also when it does backtracking it doesn't do it excessively which is kind of impressive i'm now a dead chicken how unfortunate it is really quite the thing it's quite an impressive achievement i have to say hmm, i wonder if this is a secret yes yes it is there we go I can peck that to death, so that's fine. It's a really great game. It's it's so well put together. The, the people that made it obviously understand what is required to make this genre entertaining. And that is kind of a surprising thing, because if you want to make a Metroidvania-style game today, then you're going to get compared to an awful lot of really good stuff. Can I fight the armadillo? No, nope, the armadillo killed itself. That's that's fine by me. You You can keep doing that. Do I have to keep doing this? Apparently so. <laughs> These armadillos are really bad at this. Good lord. So, Guacamelee Gold Edition, ladies and gentlemen. Heartily recommended, as long as you have a controller. If you don't, it's probably not going to be worth your time. Unfortunately. And it would also be nice for them to fix those bugs. But there you go. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. This is currently available on Steam for $15 or your regional equivalent. I'll see you next time.